Thank you so much from Team Ajigini to Team Team Carl to Team Elishin to Team Solomon. Those are wonderful messages um, to be shared. Awesome. I'm really, really, really inspired to keep hearing and hearing and hearing this. So we, without wasting too much time, we'll go straight to the interactive session. What we're going to do with this interactive session is that we're going to peer each team, each team going to ask one team each question so that um, we can actually um, harmonize this part. Um, but before I allow Pastor Holy to continue this part, I, I just want to ask um, Mrs. Ajigine of Team Ajigine this wonderful question. What's your reaction when you first um, met your first COVID patient? What? I, 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 <laughs> Your reaction when you met your first COVID patient. How did your heart span? Did you do it? Did you, did you, or did you, tell us? It wasn't, it wasn't even it wasn't even one. As soon as I go walking to walk that night, it's like, okay, you're working on this floor, COVID patient. All you know, the floor. I said, okay. Immediately, because you know, initially when you know. At the beginning of the COVID season, you know, when it was coming in, we were not, you know, we didn't have any COVID patients. So as soon as, you know, we, you know, we started having them, we're like, wow. Immediately what, start, what came to my mind as that night, it was like, if you feel a day of adversity, your strength is small. I took up the courage. Mm -hmm. As soon as I took up the courage, I called my husband at home. I said, okay, I'm working at COVID, with COVID patient tonight. And meanwhile, even <laughs> during the time, before leaving home, we will pray, you know, my husband will lay hands on me, I will, will pray for me, even my children, you know, I'll go. So immediately when I, you know, when I got to, got to work that night, you're working on this floor. I said, how many patients do I have? Oh, you have eight, and they're all COVID patients. I said, okay. Hey. And I said, okay. I said, okay. So all my colleagues, they, they were like, oh, wow. So one of them said, you know, we know she's she's gonna do it, you know, you know, she's a she's a church girl, you know, we just talk like that. And so, like I said, immediately my mind tells me, you know, if you feel in this of adversity, your strength is small. What will be your story? You always talk to them about Jesus, you always talk to them about church, you talk to them about Christ. So what will be your story? So immediately I just I just spoke in tongues, I said, Lord, I know you are here. You are my shield, you are my you are my protector. And in my mind, I'm like, okay, you need to put on all your PPE, make sure your phone is not going in with you, because you know, by venture, your you know, you might. So after I spoke with my husband, I just make sure I put my phone off because I don't want to touch it, and you know. So I was in the room with those patients, walking from one room to the other, you know, speaking in tongues, you know, just proclaiming, uh, speaking uh, life unto them, and even more so when I was, uh, even when I was a student. This has been my watchword. My hands, his hands are healed. Mm. My appearance will heal my patient. So this has been my watchword. So immediately I just asked the Lord, they might have COVID, but as soon as they, they come in contact with me, they are healed. Mm -hmm. And as soon as I'm giving them their medication, I said, Lord, in the name of Jesus, we we'll work on this medicine to heal them. Mm -hmm. So I do not put my trust in this medicine, but I put my trust in you, the healer. We don't know where the disease is coming from. We know it's from the pit of hell, but Lord, in the name of Jesus, we send it back to where it's coming from. Because it's like this thing was about to claim all lives. You're like, come on, what's going on? So, like I said, that was my watchword. You know, my watchword, my hands, you know, hands are heels. And uh, like I said, the word that came to my mind as soon as I'm to walk on that floor, if I feel in the days of adversity, my strength is small. What is my strength? Christ has been my strength. Even sometimes on the floor when we have a, you know, people that are aspiring, as soon as you know, we call code, I just begin to pray, Lord, life back to this one, life back to this one. You know, some you know, some will do CPR, they come back to life. Some A, hey, some we have to intubate, but A, hey, we just look at it well. Lord, we know you are here. Because I know that my, my presence at work. Is God, you know, God is at, is at work with me. So I'm the representative, I'm his representative at my job. 
So it, it, it brings healing. I, speak, I see healing, healing on, the, on my patient. I speak healings to them, healing. I say, you know, some of them have been going through many things, no family, even for instance, at this time that nobody is even allowed to come in. I look at it, I say, wow, you can't even have access, access to your family. You can't, you can't even see them. You have to just have to do, uh, do FaceTime with them and all those things. But I see myself as their family. When I walk, get to work, I ask them, how's your day been? You know, just to let, make sure that, you know what, I am doing what God has called me to do. So that is my story. Wow. I'm a COVID patient. <laughs> <laughs> Over to you, Pastor Olu. <laughs> Okay. Thank, thank, thank you very much. You know, thank you very much. You know, let me just talk about before we go into this. I remember the first time my wife called me and she said, you know, I'm working on the COVID floor. I just said, you know, it's okay. You, you can do it. You know, Christ can do it through you. And, you know, and we prayed and, you know, God has been so faithful, oh, yes. you know, oh, yes. since, mm. you know, since the fall day of COVID and right now it's still COVID. You know, my wife has worked on the COVID floor and, is you know the way it is in America is different from the way it is in Nigeria. So people are dying, everything is happening. Mm -hmm. You know, and she, my wife has been working with COVID patient, and they, my wife tested twice a week. So we test you twice a week. You know, every Monday and every Thursday, COVID test twice a week since March. You know, they've been in one one they twice a week. So they fly with one test a week, then they move it to twice a week, and she's been doing that. And from March to December, mm -hmm. God has been oh, a yes, faithful Lord. God. Mm. <laughs> They've tested that. I, I, I can't tell you how many times she has she have gone through COVID tests. And this test is not just a simple oh, test. It's a very, you know, irritated one that will go into your nostril and everything like that. But God has been faithful. So what are we talking about? We're talking about, you know, you know, family as an asset, you know, to Jesus Christ. And so I just want to encourage everybody, wherever you find yourself, Whatever you are doing, you have the eyes of God. You are the hand of God, and you have the mouth of God. And one thing about God is that anytime God invested in something, God has invested in us. God wants a ROI, return on investment. And the return of God's investment is us being the light of God. People seeing us, seeing us as the Bible, people seeing us, seeing Christ, people seeing us, seeing us as the Bible that they read every day. In my, life, in my wife's place of work, a lot of time, I have people talking to my wife, I have people talking to me that, wow, you know, we love this. Every time she's at work, the patient, they're all happy that, wow, we like that African nurse. She's, she's, you know, she's patient, she's kind. Sometimes she'll pray with them. Some will say, I, I, I've been waiting for you. Where have, been? Where, where have you been? When they move up from one floor to another floor, they, wow, we want that African nurse. We want African nurse. What am I saying is because, you know, she has made herself to be the eyes and the hand of God. Sorry for diverting, but right now we're in the interactive section. So right now, what we're going to do, we are four right now. So what we're going to do right now is that we're going to pair ourselves together. I know we have a schedule, but since Mark and Jola is not here, I believe they are busy. So what I'm going to do is that I'm going to do something different from the schedule. So I'm going to select a family and that will be the family we ask ourselves question back and forth. So. I'm going to pick because I'm the one coordinating. I have the power. So I'm going to pick a family that I'm going to be coordinating. I'm going to be asking questions today. So I'm going to pick. So it's going to be myself and Tim Carr. So Tim Carr, I'm going to pick you guys. <laughs> I'm, going to, I'm going to start with you. But before I do that, I'm not the first person to ask questions. Tim Election, you're going to be the first person you know, to ask questions. So you are stuck with Tim Solomon. I'm sorry. So, <laughs> so. We, are happy. Yes. we are happy to be stuck with them. <laughs> so go ahead and you know, so we're gonna be an interactive session. So what we're gonna do is that Tim Election, you ask Tim Solomon a question, then we answer it, and Tim Solomon will ask you a question. Then I will ask Tim Kai a question, and Tim Kai will ask us back a question. So go ahead, sir. Over to you, Tim Election. Okay, so um Tim Solomon, um, thank you for your lovely, um, um, you know, lovely, uh, you know, lovely exhortation. So one question that I was just wanted to tell us, because Jesus is very practical. Can you can you talk to us 
uh, one of your experiences that 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 extended your faith. You know that, that you had to trust God. Mm. That you had to believe God together. And 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 I know that most people have that experience. My wife and I we have that experience too. So can you talk to us about that? <laughs> okay. Oh, you're muted. You're muted. You need to unmute. We can hear you. Yeah. Your mic is off. Yeah. You're you're just on mute. It's still yeah. Your 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 video is off now. I think yes yes. Oh no no no. You but you need to come back. Come back. Beautiful. Yeah. Ah, then you you're what? muted again. <laughs> Yeah, you were, you recently were, yeah. Yes. Yes. Okay, yes. you hear me now? Yes. yes we can. Yeah. Okay. You guys, you know what? My husband, he lost his job. Mm. With this whole COVID thing, mm. you know? And mm. so, but I still had mine, you know? Mm. And, and so in that time, we just really had to trust God. Mm. And, uh, and he, my husband is a chef. Mm -hmm. Right. And he, uh, you know, he's very good with his cooking and his confectionery and, and, and he's very artistic and, and stuff like that. And you know what? Out of him being unemployed, he started up his own business. Mm -hmm. And he is baking cakes for this town that we are living in. Mm. you know god he is so faithful but you know in the beginning in the beginning it was so because yes. it's so new to us you know mm. um not not being business people and you know not having the mindset and 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 you know not we made many mistakes in the beginning and then we come together and and then we talk it out and and you know and and god he was so faithful you know mm. every time i ask god lord let the orders come in Lord, we are waiting for the orders mm -hmm. to come in. And you know what? Mm -hmm. We have like a big park here in, in the area where we stay in. So I go running this park. But, but it's not running. It's my time with God. So I run with God in this park. And when I come home from that mm -hmm. run, every time, the orders have come in. You know, mm -hmm. for December, we are so busy. We are so busy for December. And you know what? I don't know. I don't know if my husband is ever going to work for a boss again. Yeah. And, and, you know, I don't know. And, and you know what? He, he meet this one guy. He has like in this coffee trailer. Mm. I also meet this guy. But now I'm wearing my police uniform and, you know, he said, no, the police officer get discount on coffee and all that. And so we started to speak about the word. And so I said, you know what? My husband, he has, a, he has an eye for certain things. You must contact him. And, but at the end of the day, they have met up already. And so wow. this guy, he, he's opening a coffee shop. And he's ordering the cakes of the coffee shop from my husband. Yeah, nice. Great. And, and now you know what? God is so faithful. You know, he put you in a situation so that you can take the leap of faith. Wow. Yeah. Yep. Very he, allowed, he, he, he allowed this to happen so that mm. we can take the leap of faith. And you know, it's not only the baking. He's also now consulting for other coffee shops and places because he opened the coffee shop already. So he has the wisdom, he has the knowledge of that. And that is how, how our faith in God has grown in this time. Yeah. Wow. You know, what you said makes a lot of sense. Thank God you. wants all of us to take the leap of faith. Yeah. And sometimes he will push you on mm -hmm. the cliff. But really, and, and no you know cliff, something else. You know? Mm. <laughs> go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. <laughs> yes, and you, and you know something else. When you hand something over to God, you need to let go. So many times mm. we hand things over to God, we hand the situation over to God, but we still want our finger in the pie. 
So we must just take our hands out of the situation and keep our keep our mouth shut so that God can do His work. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Awesome. Awesome, Shay. Congratulations, Tim Solomon. So you are now the boss man. Boss man. The boss. <laughs> yes. The boss. And I'm the boss lady. The boss lady. <laughs> And you are the PM of the business because you are the face of the business, and then he is the solid one behind oh, doing the work. Thank you so much. Thank you. So you're supposed to ask us a question. So ask us a question. Oh, no, I'm ready for a question. I'm ready for a question. Tell us more about your last, the last date night you have. When did you go on a date night, and what do you usually do when you go out on a date night? The two of you. Who was our last date night? Okay. The last date night. Not real. Okay. It was let's more like date day. That was last month. We went for a recording because with COVID, we've not been able to go out uh, the way we would usually do. So we went for a TV interview somewhere and we decided to play the game that we normally play when we have have our dates day. What we do is we play a game just to review our relationship. And what we do is I will tell him sometimes not up to five, three things at least I like about him, three things I don't like and I want him to change. So that helps us review our relationship. Normally before COVID, we used to go out every week actually because one, we didn't one, have once a week, we, could, we didn't have children at home. They were in the boarding house. But now that they are back here, we've not really had dates day, you know. So, but we just okay, sit together okay. And so that last week we had to go out together, so we took that as an opportunity to just talk. Okay, now we're alone in the car; nobody's here. We're not going shopping with the children. Let's talk about us. <laughs> so that was yes. that was that was it. Yeah. So we've not really had a proper date. Uh, ceremony but in terms of springing surprises on each other even at home we do that we try to be there for each other we bond we make love we fight and we're just crazy like that <laughs> uh, you know you know what i like i like what you said about the five things that you like and the five things that you don't like yes. and you know what I think that we must try that also, you know, because we can really learn from each other by, by doing that. Thank yeah. you so much. I, I, I thought already what five things I'm going to ask. <laughs> okay, let me give you an example. What I don't like. let, me, let me give you an example. Let me give you an example. If you yeah. say the five things, what you do is, so yeah. then how do we do it? So, so we start with a good one. Start with a good thing first. Start, start with, with a good, thing. good one. So, so example, like I spoke a while ago. I, I liked how she how she was how she takes care of uh, some of our friends that she really takes care of them. So I I talk about that. Then she also says something she likes about you. <laughs> then 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 I say something that I want her to change. But always please end with the with good a positive, one. Positive, yes. End with one good one because you don't want to. The, the negative one might touch it a bit of now. Yeah, and definitely. some of us don't take feedback very well. So you have to learn to end sandwich. With, uh, yeah, sandwich, you know. Because the good. And then what you want to change. What you want to change in the between sandwich. the good behind and the, it. Yeah. And, and, and at the end of it, sincerely speaking, you will you appreciate your own. You, you'll be shocked. You will hear some things that you have never had. You, you, you've been married. I, I've been married. We've been married for 17, 17 plus, years. Yeah. And, and I'm still learning. <laughs> I'm still learning some things that, wow, I didn't know this. <laughs> um, this is part of the lovely, you know, lovely. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm still learning that. Okay, thank you. Also, Luz, thanks, sir. You're muted. Thank, thank you very much. That was, you know, I love, I love your section. That was great. So, so it's going to be our section right now. I think what we're supposed to do is like, I'll give you another, our time is already spent. So I'm just going to go right now. So it's going to Tim Carr. So it's, you're going to ask us a question. I'm going to ask you a question. So over to you. Thank you for your section, Tim Elisha and Tim Solomon. That was wonderful. That was, I mean, mind-blowing you guys took it to the next level so hopefully 
will do better. So, for <laughs> Timka, you know, I'm training challenges to you guys. <laughs> so let's go, Timka. Ask us a question. I make it. Okay, simple. thank. Don't be too. Don't be too. <laughs> Can't do it. Don't worry. It's gonna be fine. Uh, so, so it's gonna be it's 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 one question, but I'm going to it's gonna be like A and it's gonna be like one and one A. So, one, how do you resolve conflict? Even from the last session, I mean the the first season, I tried to you know understand the two of you. I see that she's the beat. You know, she's, she, she literally thinks through everything she wants to say. I, I think she's not very spontaneous. Like she's just very calm and all of that. So I, I'm just thinking. So I, I need to know how you resolve conflict. Then one B, one B, um, when she cries, if she does, and I think she does, right? Okay. When she cries, do you give her like a tissue to clean her eyes, like just take care of herself. <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> I had no hand in those questions, sir. All right, you will reap what you sow. No, don't worry, don't worry. Look at the way you saw it. You will reap what you sow, Florence. So, what was the last question? Which one? The last one. Yeah, I think it said one, one A. Is there any one B? Okay, first one. No, no, no. The, that's one and one A. That's it, two. Okay, that's good. So my wife, we let my wife answer the question first. So over to you. Okay, thank you so much. Uh, for the aspect of the conflict resolution, actually, you know, when there's a conflict, we don't let it, I don't let it linger long and because I look at it in the eyes, I look at it with the eyes of God. No. Okay, is this conflict really the mind of God or is it, you know, it comes down. We look at it, I look at conflict in the aspect of, okay, is this a godly conflict or a self conflict? Because uh, there are some conflict that can happen, you look at it, okay, is this really godly? Is this the mind of God for us, really? Or it's just, I uh, just want to fulfill my own, you know, my own fleshy aspect of it. So what you, I look that, like I said, I look at it, I look at it in the, with the eyes of, you know, in the biblical way. What does, what does God say about this? Like, uh, I remember when, okay, when we're about to, you know, to buy the house, you know, we'll just look at it, okay. The kids are growing up. We just need, you know, one more space for them and all the other, all the stuff. I just, you know, it shouldn't be a conflict, and it was, it wasn't even a conflict. But I just told my husband, oh, honey, you know, you take charge of that aspect. Hey, I, you know, I'll follow you, whatever the decision you make. But he was like, oh no, I need you in this. I said, honey, whatever you, you know, whatever you take up, whatever you say, I'll, you know, wherever you go, I'll follow you. And, uh, you know, we'll checking those IFCs, it got to a stage, okay, there was the one that wanted to set up. I'm like, oh, no, I don't like this. I love my kitchen to be well spaced out. But so, you know, when we look at it, I'm like, okay, I love my kitchen to be well spaced out. I love, you know, space here environment. But looking at it, you are the one that said, okay, wherever he speaks, you know, you follow. But at the same time, and I thank God for him too. He allows me to have my, you know, say, no, 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 no. Like, no. I need your contribution, you know, whatever you want, I'm, you know, I'm able to, to do, you know, to, you know, to bring, I mean, whatever you want, you know, let it come on. But I just want to thank God that in, during those times, I'm like, okay, I still want my kitchen to be worse, crazy. I want, you know, this is what I want, this is what I want. But in that in that aspect, that could have really caused a little conflict. 
But at the same time, I just look at it. Well, this is a family. Okay. What you what what you want in the family, and uh, when you are pleased with what you want, it makes the family go smooth. Because uh, no, no, nobody wants to hang on the hang on, you know, on you know, on the rope of oh, I'm just trying to be. No, everybody have a say. And uh, you know, everything went well. So, like I said, I don't really see any conflict because I see it as you know what well, that's part of things that make the home great. Okay, so let let me let me answer that question. You know, my wife is somebody that is very spiritual. You know, so she likes to spiritualize everything. You know, but for somebody like me, you know, it's good to be in spirit, but it's always good to be you know to be be like. <laughs> Sometimes they to be physically minded is good. And to be really minded is better. But you no, know, for me, when it comes to conflict, it's good to be spiritual. But for me, I just want to bless what is going on. When it comes to conflict, my wife, she doesn't talk, you know. And that's one of the things that bothers me a lot. You know, when there is any conflict or anything, my wife will not talk. Okay, what happened? What can we do? She said, nothing. And you know, silence sometimes is one of the major problems. <laughs> you know, when you know that somebody is hurting and they are not talking That's and they will not say anything. So I'm just okay. For me, when it comes to conflict, that the need for us to have, you know, know that I always talk to my kids. I talk to my kids about this and that, you know, when it comes to conflict, that's what we call personal and process. The reason why there is problem when you're solving conflict is that you make the conflict personal. When you make it personal, you're not be able to be able to resolve it. But once you make a conflict a process, it's a process to so take yourself out of it and just, okay, what happened? What did I do wrong? What did you do wrong? You know, what can we do better? But when you make conflict, when you make conflict a process, you know, we're going to talk to each other, but it's a process. Don't make it personal. And so for me, when I'm resolving conflict, I always tell my family and my wife that, you know, don't let us make this thing personal. <laughs> what you did was wrong and it was wrong. It's not personal, but the issue is that let's make it a process. So for us, when we're resolving conflict, we always make it a process, not a personal. And when you are not careful sometimes, the reason why we have problems in homes because they make the conflict, they make it personal, and they don't make it a process. When you make it a process, you'll be able to trash out, okay, this is what happened, and you tell yourself the truth, and you forget about it, and you move forward. So that's the way we resolve conflict. Then number three is that if my wife is crying, what do I do? I think for me, that's a hard question because the first time I saw my, I think the only one time I saw my wife cry. And that was when she lost, you know, my wife lost your dad when when she was in when he was in college. That was like it was like, where you, like 22 years ago when she lost, you know, she my wife lost, you know, my wife lost, you know, lost her father then. So that was like 22 years ago. And that was the first time I saw wow. her, right? And since then. You know, I, I, <laughs> that, I, that was the first time I saw her. That was, and the only thing I did for her was just, you know, just to just, you know, give her a tissue and just be there for her and just tell her, you know, whatever has happened has happened, sorry, and everything. And that was, that, that was, that was it. And that, I think that was the last time I saw her, you know, cry. She's not a, you know, she's not that, my wife is not that emotional. You know, if something is going on, the only thing I do that when she's emotional, the most thing that my wife will do is that she will not talk. And when she doesn't talk, you know that, you know, like the fire on the mountain. <laughs> hey, hey. So, so that's it. That's it. Uh, hopefully we're able to answer your question. Yeah, then, yeah. So can you ask them, please? Oh, wow. <laughs> hey, hey. Good. How do you handle, um, you know, this may, you know, linger to the extended family. How do you handle your, you know, your in-laws? How do you handle your in-laws? Mostly, you know, the sister-in-laws. So that, that's one question for my, <laughs> my own question is very simple. You know, so both of you guys, you know, let's keep it real. <clears throat> so, when it comes to intimacy, who is the who is the most active person and who's always you know 
ask you to say, okay, this is what I want there. Who normally started? Who, who want to, who always now who is most active when it comes to intimacy, please? <laughs> <laughs> that is the second question. <laughs> I told you you will get it by good guys or friends now. Take it running over. What is wrong with the rapper? Oh my god. <laughs> wow. See, I told you to ask you a question. So we we uh, okay with in laws. Okay, let me even start by saying that. I know why my wife asked that last question because she, she cries professionally. <laughs> <laughs> so it's. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You're forgiving. Is it cries professionally? We will go and set up crying association of Nigeria. Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> For in-laws, I think, um, I think first or second year, I, I, I think when we had our first major, you know, first major encounter with in-laws, um, it, it almost wrecked the marriage because I think that was the first major issue we had that in-laws came into the mix and, you know, at some point, you know, it was, it was really very, 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 very um, uh, chaotic and, you know, um, it almost shattered everything. Yeah. Um, but, but what we have done over, over the years um, is that we, we, we have made it, okay, we've made everybody understand. And I think also it's, it's, it, it comes with a team-centeredness marriage. We've made everybody understand that whatever you tell me, my wife will hear. Whatever you tell my wife, I will hear. So you don't come and say, um, my son, I want to tell you something, or my brother, I want to tell you something. No. As you are telling me, in fact, while you are still standing, I'm putting a call through to my wife. Or if she's standing there, I'll say, ah, see what this person is saying. So there are no secrets. There are no, um, there are no, there's no room for speculation. In fact, I think it was a couple, I think it was last month. Um, I went to my sister-in-law's place, that's my wife's sister, and her mother was there. And immediately I came down from the car. Um, the mom said, uh -uh, are you alone? Where is your follow-follow? <laughs> <laughs> you know, so for them to have gotten to that um, understanding, so they know that, I mean, there is really nothing you are going to tell this guy that, or there's nothing, you know, and whatever happens, we, we, just, we just do it together. So th there is no opportunity for you to put in a wedge in between. So that's the way we, we really manage. And once we've taken a decision, irrespective of how I feel, if it's something we've taken a decision on, that decision stands. So whether it's going towards my family, whether it's going towards um, her family, um, it stands. I mean, it's as little as how many times you visit, how many times are you going to visit people on this side versus visiting people on this side? You know, and even if people on this side, the proximity is closer, we wouldn't just naturally lean to, to this side. It's like, okay, if we visit once a month or once three months, you, you, you take him, irrespective of how you feel or how close or whatever is happening, that's what we've, we've decided. And if anybody's angry about it, or people are making comments or, you know, whatever it is. Like there were some comments that were made this morning, right? Mm -hmm. Family comments and my wife, you know, I told you she's professional in that aspect. And she was, you know, trying to, to take it above and beyond. And I just told her, I said, you know what? Um, I don't think they should bother you. This is how to go about it. Stop being on the defensive. Sometimes you have to be on the offensive and don't wait for things to to get scattered before you try to fix. So yes, so they are real, they happen, but sometimes um, we, we, we just, we're not, we not unaware of anything. So I think we're always on the same page. I think that's the best way to handle it. We are 
always on the same. So when he is in and um, something is happening and they think it's a secret, obviously it's not a secret. You know that as long as my, as long as I know, my wife knows. So 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 sometimes the best way to go around it is to just even talk with her first before talking to me, or sometimes um, vice versa. Um, then in terms of intimacy. Um, I think she's she's, the, she's she's our leader when it comes to that. Now, now you went that way because if you it's no a, no I'm, way um, because yeah, I'm not saying I'm not saying it's time. So I think she's she's the leader, right? And you know, before now she used to say, in fact, you know this kind of question. You can never be right or wrong. You just have to be in the middle because whatever you say will be used against you. <laughs> <laughs> it will be used against you at the right time. So I, I, can't, I, I have to be very diplomatic. Please pardon me, sir. I, I, I please. So, so I think, I think because he used to say, you know, uh, people say the way to a man's heart is either through food or through sex, and I don't know which. Which divide you fall on? It's not true sex. It's not what are you are you really a man? I don't yeah, know. that's what she is. Uh, sir, are you sure there's you are, you are you are acting strange, you know, kind of, you know. So so I think I think so I think I think there's an assumption because because people think no, he thinks he has been able to make people think that I am the spontaneous one. And because he made them think so, people really think now that I'm spontaneous. And somehow they would just want to think it's cut across. But, you know, sometimes this personality things can be deceptive. So let's leave it like that, that there is no right or wrong answer. Because if you want to go that way, at the beginning it was not so, but for some time it has been so. So it was, <laughs> come here. <laughs> so I think that for now, I don't know if it's 50-50 or whatever it is, but, me, I won't say it's me. No, because I just said it. She has said it. She has answered. So I will say it. It's the two of us. So the two of us are. I, th <clears throat> thank you very much for, for for the way you answered the question. Thank you for making it a process answer, not a personal answer. So thank you very much <laughs> for for making it that way. So, brother Tayo. So I just want to appreciate everybody. You know, I think we're going to be wrap, wrapping up. But I know we. I know we have. We have Sister Titilayo and Brother Tayo on the, you know, the watching us right now. I want to ask them if they have any question, they can ask real quick, and we are here to answer the question. So, Sister Tayo and Sister Titilayo and Brother Tayo, please, if you have any question for the panelists, please go ahead and ask so that we can wrap up. Brother Tai, do you have any question for us for the for the panelists, please? No, no questions at all. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. Really. I, I hope you really enjoy the Yes, yes, it's been a blessing. I'm I'm logging in from the UK. Thank you very much. It's nice, it's nice seeing you. It's a privilege, you know, to have you on this panel. So to, to have you on this on this forum. Thank you very much. My pleasure. Thank you. Sister Titilayo, please, do you have any questions for us before we hand over to Brother Tayo? Good evening, everybody. Good evening. Uh, I really enjoyed the program, but I don't have questions. I really enjoyed the program, and it's very, very interesting. Everybody have said something that is very, very impactful. So I believe God will help us all to do what is needful as, as parents, because the job really, really lies on us. For us to bring up a golly seed, so the job actually lies on us. But I pray that God will help us to do what is needful. And for us to bring up our children in the way of the Lord, so that when they grow in it, they will not depart. But instead, they will grow stronger and they will flourish in it, so that their own seed as well will also, will also be... like God, because God have, God said we are God on health. Just, I will say well done to everybody that have presented one thing or the other today. I'm very, very impressed and I'm very, very happy with all your presentations. Thank you. 
Thank, thank you very much, man. So as we're gonna wrap, before we wrap up, I just want everybody to just say, Simelesh, what is your last word for this meeting? So just in 30 seconds, one minute, give us your last word. Right. Okay, for, for me, I say this. Yes, the word you can say, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Let's truly serve God and let's serve others. Let's serve others, you know, walk in love and let's, charity let the love let everything begin from home so when it's within and then they see it without people will become as they see you model it okay so that that's what i have to so, say so um if you are if you are a follower of jesus you are you must be a forgiver mm. amen you must be a forgiver amen. yeah yeah so that's that's what i want to ask that you should you know be a thank Christian. you yeah, thank you. Tim Solomon. Okay. The last word. So from my side, family is teamwork. And teamwork is together, everyone achieves more. It does not come from one side. So it's teamwork, teamwork, and God in that team as well. And we A for away. Anything else? <laughs> my husband, he said it all. Thank you. Okay. Awesome. Tim Carr. Teamwork. Yes. Still teamwork. Teamwork. Unless on the <laughs> Tim Solomon. <laughs> yes. Uh, and um, let, let's just know that God is counting on the family. The time is near. And God is really counting on the family. Let's not be distracted. Let's not bother ourselves. One of the things that Tim Solomon said that I have to take note of is, when you put something on God's table, don't hold the table for him. Now, they didn't say it that way, but I'm just, just paraphrasing it. Don't have it distracted. Yes. Said that God, it's because we are thinking about all of this. That's why we are not concentrating on what you have called us to do. Whatever it is that your family is going through, put it on God's table and don't hold the table for him. Just do what he has asked you to do. Your family is a major asset in this end time. And so maximize and, it and, and then again I'll, I'll just quickly add like our mentors would always say um it's it's good that people understand that marriages still work um all around we have testimonies of failed marriages and people hear more of the failed marriages than marriages that marriage that are working yeah. amen true you just yelled the bed and not thank you yeah, yeah. Exactly. So when we do what we do, we because people need to see that marriages are working. Yes. We're not trying to impress mm. you. But a yes. lot of marriages are breaking. Yes, a lot of marriages are working. And so that said, marriage is still work. Thank you. Mm. Thank, thank you. you. Over to you, Annie. Oh, wow. Yes, thank you so much, everyone. Um, teamwork, is, you know, teamwork is the deal mm, of the goal. And uh, more so, yeah, let's know that those children that God has given to us, God knew that we are the perfect parent to nurture them. Yes. That is why he brought them to our life. Amen. Yes. How do we nurture them? Yes. What do we, you know, what do we let them, uh, what do we let them see at the home front? What do we display? What do we want them to display out there? Mm. Want them to display anxiety? Do you want them to display patience, love? Yes. Peace, that there's peace. Okay, that is it. That is just my. That is uh, my, you know, whatever encouragement to everyone. Thank you. So, so for me, it's just you know. God is counting on us to be His eyes, to be His mouth, to be His ear, to be His hand, and to be His leg. And when we talk about family as an asset to Jesus Christ, indeed, we are an asset to Him. And is expecting a what we call ROI, return on investment, because we're going to give accounts. And I believe our return on Jesus' investment you know, will be us being an example of Christ in everything that we do. So thank you, everybody. This has been a wonderful family life conference. Thank you very much. I really appreciate everybody's simulation. Thank you very much, Tim Carr. Thank you very much, Tim Solomon. Yes. 
Thank you very much, Tim Ajigny. Thank you very much. And everybody, thank you. Over to you, Brother Tayo. Thank you so much. Um, we've come to the end of the second season of the Family Lifetime Conference from Wildlife My Jesus Christ Story. I want to thank everybody the, from the team at Jiggini, all the way from United States, Team Cal, Nigeria, Team Elish from Lagos, Nigeria, and to Team Solomon. Thank you for honoring our invitation. We're going to announce to you season three is going to come because something one thing I've learned from this beautiful season is this, we do not have much time for questions. So season three will definitely be ask anything, ask anything. It's going to be bomb, ask anything. That was going to be the thing for this. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> well, we, we, we trust God that's going to happen um, in 2021 by the special grace of God. So. I want to thank everybody and for giving us this beautiful opportunity to be an asset to um, to our world. And want to thank um, want to thank you for your time, for for your resources, for your energy, and for contributing in the, in the, in the, uh, uh, in uh, for contributing to the wildlife ministry. Thank you all, and God bless you. Thank you. So, be, be, please, before you thank go, you. please can everybody. Hello, everybody. Before we go, can we show our can we show our faces so I can take a picture? I want to take a picture. So, Sister Titilayo, please can you show your face if you can do it? Okay. So I'm going to take the picture. I want everybody to smile. So, Brother Tayo, please look at me and smile. I know you are busy. Everybody smile. Simka, I'm jealous. Am I showing? Am I showing? Yeah, yeah. Am I showing? Show but I think very soon, by, by the time we're having the next one, at least God's going to do a walk, you know. By this time, we're going to have Tim Olumadewa yeah. in the making. <laughs> <laughs> Correct. Okay, Correct. So Flesh and blood. Not to you, sir. Okay. Flesh and blood. Okay, so ready? So, everybody smile. So thank you, everybody. It's a great privilege to have you. And it's a great privilege to be on this platform. I will get to know everybody more. So I will get everybody's number from Brother Tyre so I can, you know, I can. Sorry. Sorry, sir. Before we we'll leave, um, we're suggesting maybe we should have a WhatsApp, um, wildlife WhatsApp group. So, but we can't just do that without um, asking everybody if they would like to be part of the group. So, um, what would okay. you think? We'd like to have a WhatsApp, wildlife WhatsApp group from everyone all over the world. So, we'd like to do it something like that. So, we can always reach out and take it up from there. Over to you, sir. No problem. Thank you. It's okay with me. That would be great. I can't wait yeah. to be part of. Fine, fine, fine. It's okay. Fine, okay. Thank you. Thank fine, you. fine by me. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So, Tim Eleshin, Tim Eleshin, please, can you wrap us up with prayer, please? Tim Eleshin, can you wrap us up with prayer? Okay. Lord, we are grateful. Thank, Thank you, you for Jesus. another opportunity yes, to... Lord. To learn this very important topic, I ask, so oh God, that you will help us. Yes, Lord. So, any home that requires healing will Amen. receive healing in the name of Jesus. Amen. The Bible says there is still ban in Gilead. Yes. Spirit of God, I pray, I pray. Healing is the children's bread. Let this, let this power from heaven Amen. touch that home that requires healing Amen. in the name of Jesus. Amen. Lord, strengthen our homes. Strengthen our homes. We pray for every home represented here. Amen. Lord, that you will strengthen our homes in the name of Jesus. Amen. And everybody that will watch this, this, this lovely clip, yes, Spirit of God, deposit peace in their hearts. Amen. Deposit hope in their hearts. Amen. We pray this year will end well for us. Amen. We will not have any casualty Amen. in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Lord, we are grateful. Hallelujah. We bless wildlife in the name of Jesus. Amen. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Blessing. Thank, Thank you, everybody. Thank you so much. Thank you. Bye. Merry Christmas in advance and happy yeah. New Year. Happy New Year. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Thank you. Bye. Bye.
obsession. Also obsession. Also obsession. Wow, 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 wow. Also obsession. <laughs> 